Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is the last episode for Bach Converter. We talked about quite a bit, uh, the design, the steps, like the voltage regulation, power staging, everything. Um, what we're gonna do today in the last part, it's like we're gonna talk about what more components or like device we need to make it effective because you just can work with the just a buck converter itself you need some other stuff to support it okay and uh, if you take a look at that i i drew a diagram like a block diagram and i mentioned a few things okay definitely you have a source voltage um you have an inverse circuit you have rc snubber you have EMI filter input because you have to put EMI filter in front of your DC DC converter, uh, your converter itself, and then you have an output filter. Okay. Inverse circuitry RC snubber it ba it's actually it based on your requirement. Okay. What type of circuit you need, what type of voltage source you're using, and also remember one thing you need source impedance. Okay, and also voltage source ripple. Those are the things you need to know before designing everything, okay? So sometimes what happens, you might not need the RC snubber or like an inverse circuitry, okay? But what if you need it? That's why I wanted to show you. And like EMI filter, this is kind of very, very important thing that most of the time we need. It doesn't matter what sort of design you're doing, but putting a filter in front of it, it will reduce a lot of noises and EMI, you know, electromagnetic interference kind of thing. Okay. Then you have an output filter. Now, output filter for buck converter is kind of optional. It depends like how your requirement of the whole design or like a circuitry, like what sort of high frequency noise you need to suppress. If you don't need it at all, don't use it. Okay. So there's some significant things you have to think about it. Um, one thing I should mention, since it's a buck converter, the EMI filter usually stays at input, okay? If you have a boost converter, your EMI filter should be at the output side. If you have a bug boost converter, then you should have a filter in front of you, like in front of the converter and also at the output. So. These are some of the must uh, fitted requirement, okay? But for bug, output filter is kind of optional. It depends how your requirement goes on. Okay, let's discuss a few things. Inverse circuit, if you need, why you need that? If you see this diagram, okay? Look at that. There is a kind of step current I showed. This is your load current. When you put a load resistor, it will define how much current it's being driven through that, okay? That's a load current, that's fine, and you need that. But look at that, there is a little spike in, on top of it. What is that? That's an inrush current. Sometimes it being so high, it can actually overcome um, your requirement. Like say, if you have uh, the maximum input current to be, for example, 2.5 amps, but if you have an inrush like a five amps in total, that means it's almost like a double, right? What When it happened actually, your circuit is turned on. So you switch on your circuit and you have an inrush right away. So if you don't have any protection for that, it's gonna burn your everything down, okay? So we need some sort of inrush circuit if you have this issue. Uh, that's an external circuit. I don't wanna discuss it right now. But I have a plan, probably end of the lecture or like a bug boost, whatever. We're going to talk about all these blocks individually, like inrush, snubber, EMI filter, and output filter. Okay. So for inrush, we have a composition of like a FET, diode, and those sort of things so that it can suppress your extra inrush current. And most of the time, remember the inrush current when you start your uh, the system on it's actually being generated from capacitor 
So if you have a more capacitor, you will have more inrush current. So you, when you design the capacitor, you have to be careful. You have to have some idea how much inrush current you can have, okay? Okay. Let's move on to the next one. It's called RC snubber, okay? It's simply an R and C, a resistor and a capacitor, like they've been connected serially, like straight, okay? What it does, it has a definitely a different kinds of purpose. Look at that, the picture I drew. This is actually the blue one gives you the V, the voltage spike or like a delta V. And the red one is your current. So when you, when you give or provide like step current, you will have a change in V, like a delta V, which actually nothing but a low transient. Okay, but if you remember, and if you watch my previous lecture, I talked about it, you have a little bit loop and it goes straight, a little bit loop downwards and upward, small, that's delta V has to be complied with the data sheets. But when you have ringing, that's a problem. That can create kind of instability in your converter and that's why it's a destabilized your DC-DC converter and it can actually uh, create a lot of power dissipation as well. So sometimes you need it. When you have really kind of ringing, you have to use RC snubber. But again, if you don't have it or not too much, probably you might not need that. Because one of the disadvantage for RC snubber is power dissipation. If you don't design it properly, then your R and K C can dissipate a lot of energy, even like couple of watts as well think about it it's pretty high okay so when you design it you have to design it cleverly okay let's move on to the EMI filter input filter okay it's a very important and it's actually a place of its own you can spend the whole lecture on EMI filter okay that filter actually could be single stage filter like just a pi filter inductor and a capacitor sometimes you can use a, a damping resistor uh, to that sometimes if you need more you need double stage or second stage filter that means you need two inductor and one set like a two capacitor and if you need a damping resistor okay but if it's a high frequency like a megahertz or something that you want it to suppress you might need another thing, it's a common mode choke, okay? So that noise and high frequency is most of the time is like a common mode kind of thing. But if you go to a lower range, like a kilohertz, early megahertz, those kind of thing, it's gonna be different. So you have to, you know, um, reduce both of them. So you need second stage or, you know, first stage filter, simply LC filter, and you need a common mode choke to that, okay? We're not gonna talk about that one in detail, but later we will we will discuss in like an individual lecture. Okay, what it does? Look at the picture. In y-axis you have a dB loss, we call it decibel loss. It's a ratio, and this is frequency. So you have a flat dB loss, and suddenly it's dropped down. Meaning, this dB loss actually stands for noise suppression, like a noise reduction. How much? suppression you can do like a 30 db or like a 40 db or it depends on like the requirement you have okay so usually for emi filter it's like a kilohertz to megahertz range meaning this is the corner frequency when it's diving down that means it's like a low pass filter that's fine but where you should set it usually from kilohertz to megahertz but if you have a mill standard 461G, which is an aerospace, um, you know, requ requirement specification, then it has to be from 10 kilohertz to like around one to 10 gigahertz. So it's pretty, pretty broad frequency range that you have to take here. Okay, so you have to design it uh, really um, carefully. It requires a little bit, you know, uh, experience. Then you have a DC-DC converter. A DC-DC converter, what it does, 
it does VR and PS. Remember, I just kept it as an acronym. VR is a voltage regulation. At the same time, it transfers power from one place to the other, input to output, meaning power staging. Okay, that's fine. Then you have an output filter. Okay, what it does, it's doing the same thing almost as like an EMI filter, but EMI filter has a specification that it has to have like a really long range. But for output filter, usually it's a high frequency components. If you don't need to suppress at a high frequency uh, any uh, components, then you don't actually, you don't need to use that one. Okay, but sometimes that will go to your digital logic circuit, like, uh, you know, um, your microcontroller or like your FPGA or those kind of thing then it's better to have output filter. What it does, it will reduce frequency components at a high frequency, meaning high frequency components. So it adds low pass filter, but at a high frequency, right? So this is just a high frequency. The other one require from low frequency to high frequency. So it's good to have both, but you have to make sure you fulfill your requirement specification of your design. Based on that, you should design the output filter. But EMI filter, usually it's a must thing or must do thing in most of the cases, okay? One of the things I should mention, this FC is a corner frequency. This FC prime is also corner frequency, but they are like based on your requirement but one of the thing remember definitely follow the data sheet requirement definitely but most of the time it's like a rule of thumb it's like your corner frequency has to be much smaller than your switching frequency of the dc dc converter like a 10 times or 100 times because the the reason is like it will get suppressed the noise gets down before long before entering into light DC DC converter. So that's the plan. So when you design it, you have to fix your corner frequency in such a way that it should be much, much smaller than your switching frequency. Okay. Thank you guys. Uh, I appreciate it uh, that you joined the last lecture. Um, we will talk about boost uh, quite a bit in my next lecture. And then when we're done, we will still continue with the bug boost converter. So after that, we will cover the whole spectrum of DC-DC converter. Thank you.